Hi, I'm Julianne Cost. Here are several tips for working with rulers, guides, and smart guides in Photoshop. First, we'll start by changing the color of our guides. I'll select Photoshop, Preferences, and then Guides, Grids, and Slices. We'll change the canvas guides from cyan to light gray, and then apply that. Next, I want to show my rulers by choosing View, Rulers, or we can use the keyboard shortcut Command-R on Mac, Control-R on Windows. To change the units of measurement on the rulers, we can either double-click in the rulers, which will bring up the preferences where we can change the units, or I can simply right-click in the ruler area in order to change the units of measurement. When we're working with our rulers, we can drag at the zero point in order to reposition the point of origin. If we want to reset that, we just need to double click to reset the point of origin. Now in order to add a guide, I can drag from either of the rulers into the document area. If I hold down the shift key, Photoshop will snap to the ruler tick marks. Once I've released the guide, I can use the move tool to click and drag in order to reposition it. To toggle the orientation of the guide, I can hold down the Option key on Mac or the Alt key on Windows while dragging an existing guide or while dragging from the ruler area. To change the color of the guide, I can select the guide using the Move tool or select multiple guides by holding down the Shift plus Option on Mac or Shift plus Alt on Windows and then right-clicking and choosing Edit Selected Guides. In this case, I'll change the color to yellow. When I apply that and deselect the guide, we can see the change that we've made. To place a guide at a specific location, we can choose View and then Guides and then New Guide. We can type in the position using the current units of measurement, or we can type the value and the unit of measurement if we want to use something other than what the rulers are set to. To add multiple guides at one time, we can choose View, Guides, and then New Guide Layout. Here we can choose the number of columns, rows, as well as a margin. We can choose to center the columns, clear the existing guides, change the color of the guides, and if we use this setup often, we can save it as a preset. Another way to access the preferences is to double click with the move tool on a guide. Here I'll change the color of the guide back to cyan, and while the existing guides won't be changed, any new guides that I drag into the image area will take on that new preference color. To delete a guide, we can drag it back into the ruler area, or to clear all guides, we can right click on a guide and choose to clear the guides. For now, I don't want to do that, so I'll just click off of it. When changing the size of a document, we can choose View and then Guides, and we can lock the guides at their exact numeric values. We'll want to unlock the guides if we want to resize them proportionally within the document. To create guides based on the contents of a layer, we can choose New Guide from Shape, and Photoshop will create guides around the bounding box of the currently selected layer. To toggle the visibility of guides, we can use the keyboard shortcut Command and Semicolon on Mac or Control and Semicolon on Windows. We can use Command Apostrophe on Mac or Control Apostrophe on Windows to toggle the visibility of the grid. To change the grid layout, we can return to Preferences and then Guide Grids and Slices we can change the color of the grid, the grid line, and the number of grid lines as well as subdivisions. All right, I'll hide those using Command or Control apostrophe. All right, let's move to this next image. Now, when we're aligning and distributing multiple layers and shapes, smart guides can be tremendously helpful. As I reposition a layer using the Move tool, the Smart Guides are going to automatically display different alignment options within the image. If I release the mouse and I hold down the Command key on Mac or the Control key on Windows, I see the bounding box of the contents of the layer. Moving the cursor beyond the bounding box will display the distance between the bounding box and the edge of the canvas. With a command or control key still held down, positioning the cursor on top of another layer will display the measurement between objects. Here, if I needed to nudge something into position, I could simply use the arrow keys. 
When there are two or more shapes, Photoshop will snap the shape into position when the shapes are equally distributed. If we select all three of these shapes and then merge the shapes onto a single layer, when we use the Move tool, Photoshop will display the Smart Guides for the entire layer. However, we can always select the Path Selection tool or the Direct Selection tool, select an object, and then use the Smart Guides to help align and distribute shapes within a single layer. Finally, if we zoom into an image, eventually Photoshop is going to display a pixel grid. But if you ever want to turn this off, you can use the View menu and then choose Show and disable the pixel grid. I'm Julianne Cost. Thanks for watching.